Well, it's time to uh, showcase the return of legendary Hertfordshire rock band The Zombies. Famously, Rod Argent, Paul Atkinson and Hugh Grundy went to St Albans Boys Grammar School and Rod had been a chorister at St Albans Cathedral. They recruited Colin Blundstone and Paul Arnold and in April 1962 met outside the Blacksmith's Arms pub in St Albans before their first rehearsal, while all five members were still at school. Incredible. They had hits with Tell Her No, Time of the Season and and she's not there in America, but only the latter was a hit here in the UK. And after recording their second album, Odyssey and Oracle, in 1967, the Zombies split up, having lost faith in their record company and their management. Rod went on to form the band Argent in the 70s. He was a record producer and composer of TV and film music, while Colin Blundstone, after briefly working for an insurance company, had a successful solo career. The Zombies briefly reformed in 1989 and then they split again but have been working constantly since 2004 and they were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in America in 2019. They've just released a brand new album and they're currently on a UK tour playing live in Harpenden this coming Thursday and Friday at the Eric Morecambe Centre. I'm delighted that we can talk to lead singer Colin Blunston. Welcome, Colin. How are you? I'm fine, Mike. Great to be on your show. It's really great to be on the show and everything couldn't be better in Zombieland. It's all going incredibly well. Well, I was going to say, a brand new album, some promotional work and now this much delayed UK tour. How are you feeling about the next few weeks? I'm really excited because, as you rightly said, this tour was arranged in the first place, I think, three or four years ago. And at long last, we get the chance to play in the UK again. I mean, the Zombies notoriously tour extensively in America. And we obviously were a British band. We want to work here. But uh, we, we just always seem to be diverted over to the States, which is great fun. But we're really looking forward to, at long last, working in the UK again. So after the Zombies were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2019, you went on tour there, I think, with Brian Wilson and Al Jardine. And was that then when you started to work on this brand new album, Different Game? It was around then. It was What I can say is it was before the pandemic because we actually recorded two tracks before the pandemic hit. And then, of course, everything was put on hold. And especially as we like to record and this might sound a bit strange, but with everyone in the room at the same time. So we're almost, in effect, recording a live album, but under studio conditions. But we find there's a different energy if we're all there at the same time. Very often bands now will record their parts separately. Or maybe, you know, the drums and bass will go down and then the guitars come in the next day. It's often done in quite a disjointed way, recording now. But we've decided to go right back to how it was done in the old days, in the (laughs) 60s. You could have tried to do it remotely during the lockdown days, but you decided not to. Absolutely. It would have been a lot lot easier for us to have done it like that. And as I said, a lot of recording is done like that. Well, everyone in the Zombies has got their own studio, so it was quite possible to have done it that way. But we chose to wait and to record in the old-fashioned way and to get this energy into the studio where everyone is, as it were, playing off of one another. It affects me as a singer if I'm in that same room with the bass player and the drummer, and it affects them too. It's very subtle, but it's different. So how do you go about writing songs? Is it all Rod Argent on his own and then you sort of join in, or is it more collaborative, Colin? Well, with the Zombies traditionally, Rod has always been the dominant songwriter, but with my solo records, I write a lot more of the albums when I'm recording under, under a solo name. And Rod, you know, he's a very prolific writer, but I think it helps him to have a deadline. He, he knew that we needed an album, and of course it had been delayed by two years, and he can write for a deadline. And he was saying to me the other day, the only positive that came out of the tragedy of the pandemic was it gave him two years at home to just concentrate on writing and he's come up with some wonderful songs well let's play the title track from the brand new zombies album different game and this is the opening track in fact it's featuring rod on the organ and is this sort of looking back to the days when you were a bit younger colin Well, you know, I've talked to Rod a lot about songwriting techniques and lyrics and so forth. And I think we both would say that a lyric 
would mean what it means to you. It will mean something different to one person than it means to another person. But I know the story behind what was the trigger for Rod writing this song. And it was a very famous band, a guy in a very famous band. And he was caught out by the way the business and the world was changing. And really, he had a problem with that. And he thought it was everyone else's fault. But the real problem was him. And he just didn't, he would always blame everyone else. Whereas it was really his problem because it is a different game. Such a different game. The Zombies here on BBC Three Counties Radio and the title track from their new album, Different Game, and my guest is singer Colin Bluntstone. Now, the picture on the album cover is of the zombies watching the band's broken-down van being hauled onto a breakdown truck. And I think this yeah. really happened, didn't it, in America? It really did. That is a photo of what happened. It's in the Arizona desert. The truck caught fire and <laughs> we pulled over to the side of the road, which was desert. You know, when we parked, we were parked in the desert. The temperature was 107 degrees and it really could have been quite dangerous, but we have a wonderful road crew in America and they managed to get, I think there were three trucks and buses came out to pick us all up because there was a, we were carrying a lot of gear and a lot of merchandise as the road crew, there's the band. There was quite a lot of us to get out of that desert. And, and as I say, it, it could have actually been quite dangerous. And one of the things I noticed as we got out of the bus, there were all these holes by the side of the road, which naively I thought was some kind of drainage system. And I said to one of the Americans, what are all these holes? And they said, they're snake holes. Oh. And so... I've got a feeling that I didn't ask anymore, but I've got a feeling that at dusk, snakes would be coming. I don't, I don't really know, but it could be that snakes would be coming out of those holes if anyone, if there were snakes still living in them. So I was very glad that as dusk descended on us, all these vehicles arrived to take us away. I didn't want to stay there and find out what happened with the snake holes. I was quite happy to just... <laughs> it sort of sums up your last three years' experience of the ups and downs of being in a band, along with all the other musicians in the UK and beyond too, because of the COVID, I think. Well, absolutely. I mean, of course, it was an, an absolute tragedy on an international scale, but just for musicians, for touring musicians, it was awful because everything just stopped. But, you know, you learn in this business that you just have to learn to survive everything that comes along. And there's, there are lots of ups and downs in the, in the music industry. And you have to be sensitive enough to write and to record and perform. But you've got to be tough as old boots to survive as well. It's a, quite an interesting combination, really. And that's one of the things I think you learn very early on, just how to, how to get by. And, of course, all musicians had to do exactly that when the pandemic was with us. Well, the zombies have certainly had their ups and downs. Yes, with yes. the live dates being postponed a lot of the time as well, did the band ever consider packing it all in, not finishing the album and not going out on tour again? Oh, no, never. I mean, we've been doing this since 1961. Um, it would take more than something like that to make us consider finishing I, no no that was never intended but I, it is intriguing because this uk tour was first booked i think about three years ago it was 2020 i think yeah in the spring of 2020 and then the pandemic came and it kept being postponed and postponed and so it's it's quite an interesting experience really we are now at long last going out and doing these dates and thank heavens people have have sort of stayed loyal. They booked their tickets three years ago and they're still coming because most of these gigs on this tour are sold out and I'm so grateful for their loyalty. Let's play another track from the Different Game album. This is track number two, Dropped, Reeling and Stupid. It's got a real jazz and bluesy feel to it featuring Rod on the electric piano. And that's the thing about these songs, I think. There's a lot of variation in style and tempo and genre. What's this song about, really? Do you know, I'm not awfully sure because I didn't write this song. From memory, I think Rod just observed a relationship where someone who thought they were in a meaningful long-term relationship just got dropped and they were reeling and they felt stupid. And that's how the song came about. <laughs>
The Zombies here on BBC Three Counties Radio and Dropped, Reeling and Stupid. One of ten songs from their new album, Different Game. And you can see the band play live on Thursday and Friday, the 20th and 21st of April at the Eric Morecambe Centre in Harpenden. More about that in a moment. And at the stables in Milton Keynes, the last date of the tour on May the 6th is in fact sold out. So do you have to get kind of match fit to go out on uh, this tour 23 dates in 31 days colin i know it's a bit intimidating isn't it but we're fortunate in that we've just come back from america and it was pretty extensive touring over there but even so i start to wonder we came back on friday so completely jet lagged for the next few days i'm still a bit jet lagged now really but at, at least i know we played a week ago and it was all fine (laughs) i remembered all the words and and i remembered what songs we were playing so i have to keep telling myself we only played a week ago but match fit is an expression that we do use in the band and certainly i would say normally the third show would probably be just a little bit tighter than the first show it's it's the same for all bands i think when you start a tour every tour has a first night and you you're probably a little bit more anxious on that first night but it's something you get used to over a period of time i was going to say you've done it for such a long time but it must be pretty taxing you and rod are both dare i say 77 you must expend a lot of energy on stage it must take it out of you at the end of the show Well, I think that, you know, the joy of performing live carries you through the performance. I think what we've noticed is it's the travel that's a bit tougher because, you know, we travel hundreds of miles between gigs and once or twice, that's fine. But if you do it over a period of weeks or even months, it does start to wear you out a bit. So the shows are never a problem. We love performing. So it's an absolute joy and a pleasure to perform. The traveling can get a bit draining, But, you know, you learn to cope with it. It's all fine. And during those uh, lockdown times and the sort of relative inactivity because of COVID, maybe for the best part of a couple of years, how did you know your voice was going to last a gruelling tour when you eventually got back on the road again? Well, I mean, that's a very interesting point, but sort of in my 40s and my 50s, I can't remember, I studied with a really good singing coach called Ian Adams. Sadly, he's no longer with us. And Ian used to work with a lot of the West End shows, the people who were doing musicals, and he taught me a little bit of singing technique to help not to change my voice, to, to make my voice stronger and more accurate. And he also gave me a set of singing exercises. So right the way through those two years, I would have been doing those singing exercises. So I knew my voice was still there. And when we're on the road, I do those exercises once before sound check. So that's a 35 minute vocal exercises before sound check and then 35 minutes before the show. So I will have sung for an hour before the show starts. And that way you're reasonably secure in knowing that your voice is it's there and it's fairly accurate before the show starts. I'm so glad that I just studied a little bit about the singing technique at one point in my career, because otherwise you don't know if your voice is there until you start and you just hope for the best. Really. Yeah. And also, wasn't there a time after you stopped making some solo records and doing live gigs as a solo performer and before Rod asked you, back to accompany him on some dates i'm thinking what about the early noughties you didn't sing live did you for the best part of 25 years it was close on that absolutely so the first time that i played live it wasn't with rod actually i started a new solo band two years before rod and i got back together again and the first concert i played was in newcastle and it was really interesting i was so intrigued to see whether, when I opened my mouth, whether any sound would come out at all. It had been, I think it was 23 years since I'd done a live concert, which is bizarre. I'm not really quite sure how that happened. I got involved in doing jingles and commercials and music for films and things like that, and somehow neglected the live touring side of my career. And just one day I had to take a chance and and see what happened. But it it was fine. It was there. It was hiding, but it was there. (laughs) It took a little bit of time to get back to match fitness again. But my voice was there. You say to your bandmates, maybe when you're travelling, don't speak to me, I've got to save my voice, perhaps. 
I mean, it can get a little bit like that. I probably wouldn't talk a lot during the day when we're on tour. I'd mm. talk as little as possible. I certainly wouldn't shout or go out of my way to talk when I don't have to. Let's play another track. This is a piano-based ballad, You Could Be My Love. This is, uh, you know, something that takes me back to those early 70s solo albums by you, really. It's a lovely song, isn't it? It's a fantastic song. And you could be my Cracking ballad, You Could Be My Love, by The Zombies, from their new album, Different Game. Colin Blunstone still with us here on BBC Three Counties Radio. You can see the band play live on Thursday and Friday, the 20th and 21st of April, at the Eric Morecambe Centre in Harpenden. Just down the road from where the Zombies formed all those years ago in the early 1960s in St Albans. So you, you won't have played there before, I don't think, will you? No, I never played that. Never played in Harpenden at all, I don't think. And certainly not at this venue. But of course, we've played it in St Albans a lot over the years. How much of the new album will you play on this tour then? Because I guess people will also want to hear the classics like She's Not There, Time of the Season, Care of Soul 44 and so on. Well, I know we're playing four songs from the new album. This is one, but one of the magical things about this show is that they match so well some of the old classics like Time of the Season and She's Not There. And I think that's possibly because we've got this link with the past where we've got the main writer from The Zombies who wrote She's Not There in Time of the Season, Rod Argent, and he wrote most of these songs on the new album. And they're sung by The Zombies' lead singer, myself, and they seem to just marry very very well and we're really thrilled at the reaction that these new songs are getting every time we play them because obviously the album is so new the audience don't know these songs but the reaction to them is incredible really really heartening and uh, it bodes well for the future i think absolutely so there will be a future this isn't going to be your swan song the finale for seeing the zombies live in the uk Oh, absolutely not. You haven't got rid of us yet. Absolutely <laughs> not. trying to, but we do have to leave it. Colin, thank you so much for your time. Good luck with the album and certainly good luck with all of these live shows and these live dates three years after they were originally planned. It's great to talk to you again. Thank you so great much. To you. Great to talk to you. All the very best. Thank you. Colin Blunstone here on BBC Three Counties Radio from Hatfield, of course. Uh, I didn't realise, I think he's got another interview to do after mine, so I kept him a touch longer than I should have done. Maybe that's why you heard his phone go. So he said that uh, he's had good reaction to the album and the new songs. Um, For instance, Rolling Stone in the UK said, uh, reviewing the album, the 60s legends are proving that it's still the time of the season. Uh, Uncut magazine said, harmonies and songcraft endure, giving the album 8 out of 10. And the Scotsman wrote, Colin Blundstone's well-preserved and soulful tenor is heard to aching effect. Quite extraordinary, really, because both uh, Colin and Rod, in June of this year, will be 78. <laughs> They'll be 78 celebrating their birthdays. Let's see if they can go on until they're 80. We played you three tracks from the album, Different Game, the title track, Drop Reeling and Stupid, and You Could Be My Love. If you want to book tickets to see the zombies this Thursday and Friday, it's at the Eric Morecambe Centre in Harpenden. Their website address is the hyphen emc.co.uk the hyphen emc.co.uk and uh, for more information about the stables and the rest of the gigs on the tour their website is thezombiesmusic.com thezombiesmusic.com whole variety of styles blues jazz pop psychedelia on the album and as a uh, Colin was saying, really, uh, bringing together all the influences that uh, first got them into music in the early 1960s. They did uh, R&B and Motown covers before they started writing their own songs.